My today's guest is Mark Benham, photographer based in Southwest England, winner of the architecture category of the open competition of 2023 Sony World Photography Awards. Enjoy. Mark, welcome, welcome to Frames. Uh, good morning, early time for you. In the U you're based in the UK, right? Correct. I'm based in the UK, in the southwest of England. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, nice, uh, wonderful. Uh, you know, having you here. Um, wonderful photography, different genres, different kinds of photographs. Uh, you know, you send, uh, um, I think, around twenty images my way. You sent your biography as well, um, and uh, you wrote that you actually, you know. Uh, th those years ago, you started actually mainly with food photography, but it's not something you are doing anymore these days, right? I can see architecture, I can see landscape, portraits, you know, yeah. still life, abstract, but there is no food. So where did the food go? You probably see too much. I'm, I'm a bit like that. I jump from one genre to another. I get bored, not necessarily bored, but just want to be trying different things. Um, food photography started because of my time in Portugal. I gave you that on the bio, brief bio. Um, I was moving away from graphics, essentially, after 28 years, just needed some change, and then um, spent a lot of time in Portugal, eventually working on a book. And I went to an exhibition in the UK, in the city of Bath. Um, uh, it was the food photography, the international food photo photography competition. And I thought, I'm going to enter this next year. It looks like it was a lot of fun, um, very nicely presented. It was a mobile um, exhibition from London. And I entered an image and I won a category. And that sort of got me on the road of photographing food in action. Not, not, so, not studio stuff, but more um, uh, people making food, people growing food, artisans, um, farmers. Um, and I think I was inspired by that, that period in Portugal where it was just so um, eye-catching some of the stuff I saw. Really, really enticing stuff. Yeah, Portugal definitely not the worst place on the planet, you know, for for uh, you know following food uh, food industry, food makers, and so on, right? Right. It's it's really good. A lot of color. Yeah. Okay, and and then uh, these days, uh, you know, things a bit uh, shuffled up within your portfolios. I can see. I mean, you you are a this year winner of a architecture award of the Sony World, you know, photography award um, open competition. So a completely different genre, completely different directions. Uh, we will be sharing the, your winning image now on the screen. Uh, tell us about, about this fascination. When, when did this start, you know, architecture and, you know, um, and yeah, tell us a li little bit more maybe about the, the, the winning image as well. Well, I think, I, think, I mean, I, I left my job as a designer art director in 94 and I travel around the world and I've always been interested in just walking around with the camera, taking pictures of anything I see that is of interest. Initially, that was all about people. Um, but I think since COVID, that, that's changed a lot. And, uh, you know, we were sort of confined in where we could go and what we could do. And I became a lot more interested in smaller, intimate images, um, which sort of evolved into more about architecture. Um, and this image that um, won the architecture category was taken in Brest in France um, last, I think it was October, September, October. Um, while on holiday, funnily enough, I was with my partner, Rita Long, and we um, were getting towards the end of our trip. Always loved going into new places, uh, obviously had our cameras with us. And I was fascinated by the port area. And in the port area, there are these amazing buildings, which almost look to me like a, a composite of buildings put together on the computer. And I think it was that, that which drew me in. Um, but I couldn't get the right shot fairly close up so I had to move further away and it's when we were leaving the city I said I'm going to have to get another another go at taking a photograph of these images of, of these buildings and that's how that shot came about yeah it's de definitely fascinating there's so many lines and kind of layers to this image uh, uh, would you be able to to draw any kind of parallel you know uh, between your you know food photography in the back in those days and now with architecture is there anything you know examples fascination with lines shapes maybe is there any parallel you think it, it's going it's happening in the background between those two completely completely different genres right i, th I think there is 
Doris, I think you're sort of hitting on something which I often forget myself, and it's it comes from my graphics background. Um, I I used to, and I sort of draw on that, even though I'm not aware of it when I'm taking a picture sometimes. Um, but this one, I think, sort of clearly identifies the fact that I'm interested in how things are composed in terms of atoms and shapes and balance and colors. Um, and I think even when you show maybe some of the other shots, you might sort of pick up on that there it's just how i sort of leave things out and just include the bare essentials sometimes no definitely i, I let, let's uh, i have one more example you know this one here um even more minimalistic right couple even. of lines you know two three different colors uh, i absolutely love this shot uh, uh what what what's what are we looking at here and uh, what what drew your attention I, I don't know if anybody could possibly identify what those are behind the the um, lamp post, but essentially they're 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 also they're silos. Are, funnily enough, because of what we've just been looking at, but they are um, silos for a concrete um, cement. Sorry, a cement factory in Iceland, um, probably about thirty kilometres from Reykjavik. I can't remember the name of the town. Um, and looking at them from a distance, they didn't seem that interesting but it's when i got closer i noticed this lamppost and it was just the way it just turns away from the vertical and there was just a lovely little relationship going on there behind uh, from you know between what was going on behind and what was going on in front yeah i don't know ge generally looking through your images i have the feeling like um you prefer you know to to strip down the scenes you know to to those most uh, most important you know elements there is usually not so many elements in your shots right we are looking through to some of them right now uh is That's it one of my favorites that last one is definitely one of my favorites yeah absolutely love it but so you so you definitely you are probably um you are um trying to to you know catch viewers attention and keep viewers attention on on, on the most e just important element of any, any given scene is it is it something you're after like really you know eliminating the noise eliminating the what's ne not not necessary right in the frame it it, it it is even unconsciously it, it definitely is because when i look at my shots i can see that coming out more and more and particularly over the last um couple of years where i've been sort of trying to sort of explore a little bit more fine arty stuff um i'm i'm kind of as we all are, are so aware of what's going on in the environment, environment at the moment. And that particular shot of the, the, the dead leaves and the dead uh, bottle were items I found along a beautiful canal, stretch of canal where I used to live. And, and I've just brought them together to create an image. And it's sort of, it's me talking about the environment in my own way. I sort of, you know, talk about it in the description of that image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I notice you are also exactly next to your you know architecture work. You are also into environmental issues, and you are uh, you have been selected a couple of times at the at the Earth Photo Competition, right? With your images, I think. Uh, uh, tell tell us tell us about this one here. This is needless to say, yeah, very strong environmental issues kind of re related image, yeah. So, wh where did you what get this one? What what did you want to say with this image? This one was actually found um, when I was doing a project about um, a year in the life of a market garden, and one of the chickens had died, and it just got disposed of on the top of a fire. And the, the, the farmer didn't want me to um, take that picture, but I just felt obliged to take it. It wasn't really about environment so much, that one, but it was just something about the way that dead chicken was just lying on the dead ash drew me in i think i think again the graphics um i probably aligned the sticks just to make that shot a little bit more uh thoughtful um but essentially that's what i saw yeah v very powerful but definitely you know uh, i have one more i want to ask you about it uh, because uh there i didn't see at least in the examples you sent over you know i didn't see many 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 humans in your images but there is one right so how often do you photograph people and if then then what are you trying to you know achieve with your with your people you know with the portrait i i i started with people it's funny i've moved away from it but i'm i'm beginning to miss it um i've it's partly because i haven't been doing as much traveling like many people um but i'm beginning to open the doors up again now and 
I do really enjoy photographing people. Um, but this shot was in Vienna and just walking through the streets. It's amazing what catches your eye. Just saw this, this old gentleman um, in such deep thought, wondering what he's thinking about. He almost looked concerned about something. He might not have been. He might have forgotten something. But those are the, that's the beauty of the image. You know, what do we, how do we interpret those things? But I think it's a little bit of scrawled writing or graffiti, you might call it, on it, just above his head that really makes that shot for me. Yeah, I can I can definitely feel this undergoing, you know, a d- a designer designer heart yeah. beating, you know, in the background yeah. with with actually most of your images. But there is other side also I want to touch on the, the emotional side, you know. So we are talking about graphical design, about the composition and so on. But in the you, you wrote me in your in your message, looking at the selection of images I have sent, one might say that there is somewhat uh, a, a somber mood to all of them, you know, kind of sadness maybe or maybe loneliness. Uh, it, uh, do you think it's uh, where does it connect to in terms of your personality and what are you trying to express? Well, I'm I'm I mean I'm sort of a reasonably solitary person and particularly photography is sort of maybe more so. I used to work in a studio with other designers, but that seems a, a lifetime ago now. But I think with my work, and I know a lot of photographers will be able to relate to this. It it, it can be quite a solitary experience when you're you're moving around, um, particularly when you're doing travel photography. Um, you're just looking all the time and it's that observation that sort of almost cuts out other things that are going on. Um, I, I don't know what it is about my images, but when I did look at them, there seemed to be sort of quite a sombre mood to them. I don't know whether that's by accident or just, again, sub- I'm, unconsciously that's something I'm creating. Maybe it's something inside me. Who knows? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure myself on that. Yeah, the, the same, same with me, kind of. I mean, but I always believe... You know what we tend to gravitate towards. You know, a photograph is it's some kind of reflection, of course, of our own character and you know, uh, and, yeah. and our personality. I think I tend to to go after similar kind of scenes and subjects. You know, um, I I have the feeling this is might be something about you know the, the world is so noisy and there is so much going on and we, maybe it's just looking for these moments of solitude and quietness and so on. So it might be just yes. this. I think you're touching on something that is very true from my perspective, when you talk about the world being very noisy. Um, if I'm really honest, it's too noisy for me. I, to try, I try and sort of take myself away from that. And when I am um, traveling, I'm looking for, rather than the intensity of the central part of a city, I'm tending, tending to go around the back streets where often there's a lot more interest. You won't see maybe as many people. Um, and I have to almost force myself to go back to people to get those interesting food shots. I remember... Sorry, the um, pe- shots of people. I remember when I was in Basel, I did exactly that, and I pushed myself back into the centre where I found so many more opportunities to photograph people. But you know what it's like when you photograph people. You've got to be so patient. Um, and that's not a great thing that I'm... Um, it's not a great thing part of my personality. I don't really... I'm not really that patient. Um, so I like to move around and do different things. But, you know, I d- definitely... Uh, I'm convinced you can find many more, yeah, well, maybe not many more, but uh, certainly completely different, you know, subjects and, and, and motives for photographers in those back alleys, right? Le- you know, off the beaten track kind of places. So, uh, yeah, no, wonderful work, uh, Mark. Really, congratulations. Lo- love love every single image you send. Uh, wh- you. What are you working on right now? What what should I wish you for your, you know, upcoming months or years? Well, I'm 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 just free to get away. I'm planning a trip, and I want to do a. Um, I haven't decided what it is yet. It's, it's been a battle for me to do a proper, um, ongoing, long project, um, where I can cover a, a, a subject that has sort of deep, meaningful stuff. I'm I'm very keen to take more shots for the next Earth Photo competition. It's it's a competition that really is close to my heart because it's all about the environment. Um, so I've got to ma- um, plan a trip that talks about the environment in some way um but i've got i've got i've always like most photographers i've always got ongoing projects i'm still doing the white white window series um i'm still doing this project on exmoor near where i live and that's proving a massive challenge because of the the light and the landscape you you mentioned you know you touched on patience uh, or maybe lack of it in your case before but Indeed, on yeah. the other hand a long-term project uh requires kind of patience right in 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 a long term in a long run yeah. 
Is it something you know? That's why it's going to be such a challenge for me, um, Thomas. I mean, it's um, to to just knuckle down and stick to that uh, length of time that that's going to take to produce a, a final um, piece on a on a project. Um, and I've got to sort of work out a way of, of doing that so it's going to work for me. Yeah, and also you published one book, right? Is it correct? Yeah, the- I published one book. Uh, that was the book about Portugal, the country. Um, in terms of, it, it wasn't about people it was about the country in, in um in its entirety and, and it's it was my take on it rather than um a commission piece but i managed to get it published through a portuguese publisher it's, it's called 200 days yeah i'm just looking at the cover uh, any plans for another book or uh, you know f- f- in the future um i i'd actually I, i don't know if this is a bit egotistical but i'd actually like to put together a book of my own work so that i can see where i've gone and where i've where I'm going. Um, sorry, where, where, uh, I'd like to see where I've been and where I'm going and sort of try and track out um, what I want to do for the future, almost to put it together as a portfolio so I can look at it and say, I don't want to be doing that anymore. I want to be challenging myself in different ways. Um, I do think I want to go back to the people aspect, and I think by producing a book, I'll probably bring out a lot more of those sort of shots. Well, Mark, all, all, all the best with all your plans, so, you know, dreams, uh, projects. Uh, there, there, there seems to be much going on, I, and I can see you are really enjoying all the aspects of it. So, uh, yeah, all, all the very best. And, and, yeah, thank you so much for, for, for sharing some stories with, with our viewers here. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we, we, we stay in touch, right? And we... we Thanks, Thomas. Uh, yeah, greatly appreciated that you've taken your own time out to do this. So, um, many thanks. Thank you so much, yeah. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye.